Hey everybody, I'm back. I know these last few videos, I'm wearing the same clothes because it's the same day. I'm doing these back to back to back. While I'm talking about them, I'm going to do them back to back to back. You won't see them back to back to back on YouTube. But I'm doing them back to back to back because I'd rather talk about this in an hour's time, two hours time, and get it out of my way. So then I can control myself for the rest of the day. Because this is hard for me to talk about. Um, but it, stuff needs said. So this one's going to be a specific IED attack that I remember. And what set it off. Okay. I, ne I did not dream this. This actually did happen. In 1999, I skipped school so much, I dropped out of school. Well, in 98, I dropped out of high school. In 99, I went to a job, Federal Job Corps program. A little bit of electrician, learned, learned how to weld, and got my GED. Great program. I wasn't a troubled kid. But it had, you know. Now, granted, at the time I lived in West Virginia. I went to a place down in, in Virginia. And I lived in rural, rural, 18 miles of the nearest town. There's even people farther out than that. 18 miles at the time to the nearest Walmart. But let me explain this. What happened? 19 or 18 years old. Strong. Strong headed. I go to Job Corps. And there's a guy of a different race. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. He's he's he was a black guy. Come to find out he was in a different dorm and he was a friend. He, he come to find out he lived close to where I where I lived. So I we got to be friends. We were pretty good friends. I'm not going to name names only because I don't know what has happened to some of these people. Um, so, but anyway, this does involve gang stuff. I'm going to say that now, disclaimer. I was not in a gang. I went to my friend's dorm and we were playing, play, playing games on the PlayStation. Now, give you a little context here. Federal program for Job Corps, at least back at the time, was no more than 60-40% race split. 60-40. It could have been 60% 60 white, 40% black, or vice versa. Okay, and, and the main thing at that time was white and black. Hispanic state, you know, the other race, the the other, the other races out there, were just thrown in. Okay, the main thing at the time was white and black, and we had a lot of inner city kids down. Well, come to find out, we had a lot of the gang called the Crips. You know, blue bandanas. Blue, this, that. Those guys. Now, I had a few black friends down there. My one really good friend lived close to home. I was up playing PlayStation in his room. I don't think there was a white guy in that room. That stayed in that room. There was, what, six? There was six or eight bunks or beds in that room 
and it was his turn on the TV. He wa- he wanted to come up. He wanted me to come up and play PlayStation with him. Well, all around campus, as we were about 75, 25, 75 percent black, 25 percent white there, which was a federal problem, but nonetheless, that was what we were dealt with. They kept saying the N word to each other, but with an A at the end. Yes, this is going to have some race stuff in it. So that's what started all this. I misheard them. I thought they were saying, instead of the A, the R at the end. I'm not going to say the words. I, I'm not saying the words. But, here's the issue. I was up at my friend's dorm room in a different building than my building. And they, I just asked him. There was one other person in that room. I asked him. I said, why does every, all the black guys call each other and blank. I put the R at the end. And he told me. He said don't say that again out, out here. He said you didn't offend me. He said because you're asking a question. He said they say uh. Not er. I said oh. My bad. I'm sorry. Got the other guy in the room goes running to his brother, literal brother, I think. He was a crip. He goes running to the head crip of the where we were at in our little community. They don't say nothing to me. They don't come running into the room or nothing. When I go to walk out the door, hall's lined with black guys. There's the one dude that heard me say it to my friend. And then there's the the head guy of the gang. They heard me into tennis court behind their door. And do a little court. On the court. He asked me what's going on because I know him. I've been in class with him and stuff. He asked me what happened. And I told him. Word for word. My friend told him. Word for word. And I apologized to all of them. That I misheard what they had said. What what they were saying to each other. And that I'm never going to say that word again. Down there. At least. I'm not a racist person. There's good and bad in everybody. In in, in every race. Everything was cool. I said, all right, we're good. We're not going to come after you. We understand. You apologized. And we know it's sincere. Go on. That night... I was getting ready, going to bed. I had top bunk beside the door in my dorm room. Little birdie told me that there was going to be a hit kind of deal put out on me. Okay. I wish I was making this up, people. So I had a pool stick. I had I untwisted it. I was fully dressed in black, had my shoes on, my boots, my steel toe boots, and I had my pool sticks, and I was laying in bed around uh, 11 o'clock. I get woke up. Uh, You can call this racist, you can call this whatever, but when I woke up, all I saw, one white guy, 
All I saw was a sea of eyes and teeth. Because the room was black. The dark. What's the color of dark? At night. Black. But that's all I saw. There was 50 to 60 guys in my room. Ready to come after one of me. Well, thankfully that little birdie said something. I jumped down out of the bed. Got my pool sticks there. And I'm going for the door. Keep my back to the wall. Or back to my bed. And I go to the door. Because I don't know if there's guns. I don't know if there's knives. I don't know if there's shanks. I don't know if there's soap in a sock. I don't know what's there. But I know what I have. I was in protection mode. Over a simple, simple miscommunication that was straightened up. I'm not going to go into details after this because it gets kind of bad for me because I lived it. I don't like redream, rehashing this, but I think right now with all this race stuff going on in the country... This video needs put out. Me being a country boy, them being city boys, I'm going to say this. I got out of my dorm building and in the woods. Behind my dorm building. The ones that came in the woods after me didn't come out on their own. They had to have help. That's all I'm saying. That was my IED. I, I did not know about IED at the time. But a simple miscommunication. A misheard word. Brought that entire night up. <laughs> I almost went to jail that night. Park ranger, because it was it's federal property. Park ranger came, took me down to a room. My dorm manager was a former white former Marine. Color doesn't matter, but he was a white former Marine. A lot of people were scared of him. He got me out of the woods. He didn't come in after me. He called for me. So we were friends. I went down myself. Park ranger was there. Black guy. I explained to him what happened. Self-defense. I didn't come after them. They came after me. Over a simple miscommunication. Er instead of uh. Three letters. Three letters triggered that. That night. Things settled down after a couple days. <sighs> things went back to normal. Staff started watching and paying attention to me. Not them. Me. For what I was going to do. They started getting me involved. In projects on the property. So that I wasn't in close quarters. With all these guys. That's what happened. That's the truth. People got hurt that night. I'm not saying I'm a badass. I've never been in the military. Never had any formal fighting training. But anyway, I'm at my, lim my time limit. Talk to you all later. Bye.